I know what you guys want to see. What does it have under the hood? What a great day it is today because I am taking delivery of my second dream classic car. And by second, I don't mean second choice. I mean, if you guys think back to how my channel started, it all began in a certain order. And by a certain order, I mean a Mustang started it all. My Shelby GC350, this was the first car on the channel. And then sometime later, a really nice subscriber, Kevin, Hi, Kevin. He let me borrow his Z01 to make a D drive. As soon as I drove that thing, I'm like, I am in love. So then a few months later came my Camaro ZLE, Z01, one Elite, and oh my God, the commotion that that caused on this channel. People thought I got rid of the 350 and I'm a Chevy fan and how can you do that? You can't have both. It was outrageous. So I have the top two. I have a Mustang and I have a Camaro. I have to complete it with a third one. So of course I got a Hellcat Red Eye. Sadly, it's no longer here. Does not mean it won't be here soon. Maybe because I can hear it knocking on my door. Either way, I still have a Dodge to represent with my Viper ACRE. So now we're going back to the past and starting all over again with my 69 Mustang. So what could be next? I'm pretty sure you guys can fill in the blank. And if it isn't obvious already, I think I kind of just gave it away with my shirt. Either way, the car is outside. The transfer just told me that he is here. I honestly forgot that I was wearing this shirt and here I am trying to give you guys clues. So let's go see. Okay, well. <laughs> This store is not gonna stop me from looking at my Camaro. Oh, let's go. Here's the transport and there is my Camaro. Oh my God, I'm so happy right now. Voila, my 1968 Camaro. And not just any regular Camaro, which you can probably see by the rear because it is thick. Boy, was it challenging to find a Camaro. It's like the total opposite of the Mustang. I thought that was hard. This one was way more challenging to find for a few reasons. I mean, they made less of them than the Mustang. And I mean, these go by very fast and the price point is way higher than the Mustang. So ultimately I was stuck between a 67 or a 68. Obviously I chose the 68, but man, these are challenging because there's not a lot of them. And the ones that you find, it's like one extreme or the other. It's either a shell that they want 50K for it. I'm kidding, obviously I'm exaggerating, but way too much for a shell or a really done up nice car. There's nothing in that middle point, which is exactly what I was looking for. Similar to the Mustang, that project area car until I stumbled upon this one. I can already read the future. I can read your comments right now in my mind. Why didn't I get a 69 Camaro? Simple, because I prefer the body of a 68 Camaro because to me, this is my opinion, I think that this shape is like, it resembles a true classic car shape of a Camaro. But that does not mean that the 69 Camaro ain't coming sometime later on. I just wanted to start with the 68. And I read your comments. Why didn't I get a Fastback Mustang? Who says I'm not? I wanted to start with this one. The Fastback is going to have a completely different build that is coming later on along with others. But again, I'm not a talker, I'm a doer. Once it's here, you guys will know. And if you haven't noticed, this Camaro is tub. Not a mini tub, a whole ass tub. So I've always seen pictures and videos of Pro Street Camaros, and that was the vision that I wanted when I eventually got a classic Camaro. But then when I was looking for one, I came across this one. And ultimately it was between this one and another one. The only difference with the other one was that it was pretty much stock, but it did have body issues. They were like around the same price point, but I just decided with this one. I mean, I could have worked with the other one too, but I thought, you know, I can't let this pass out. This looks so nice. And it also helped that it had left less body issues, but either way, it would have been either or I just decided for this one. Let's start with the most obvious thing, which is the paint. The original color of this car is gray, which I'm glad it isn't because that's too boring for me. This, if you get past the dirt, it's more of like an indigo blue and I like it. I don't know if I'm gonna keep it, but it'll do for now. And of course, since they painted it, it is debatched, which I don't know. I don't know if I like it or not. I mean, I do like the clean look. Sometimes I'm like, I want the badges. I think maybe I will add the badges, but like I said, it'll do for now. I really like the condition of this paint because it's in really good state. So other than it not being a boring gray, I also like that they paint match the bumpers because <laughs> I don't really like chrome. So I do like this look a lot better than it having the chrome bumpers. I know I just said I don't like chrome bumpers, but for some reason it matches this car. 
I don't mind it on this one, but who knows? Maybe I end up painting it. Let me give you a quick uh, rough 360 of this car, just so I can show you the body. So the body, again, it's in good condition, no scratches, no rust. It does have rust somewhere else, but not on the body. This has a clean title, no crashes. The only thing is that it does have a small dent, which is right here. So that's going to get fixed. I'm not gonna fix it, but I know it can be fixed by someone. But other than that, I mean, this car is mint. And what I mean by the body not having scratches, I don't mean the hood because the hood does have some scratches, but that's not bad. It's fine with me. Now we can get to the interior. It is very naked and bare in there and it does need a lot of work, but at the same time, a lot of it has already been taken care of. So it's not that bad. However, there is one thing that needs to be addressed first. I present to you the naked bare interior. So this is what I mean that it's pretty much already taken care of because I don't have to do anything other than prepping it and then adding what I want. And by the way, it does have a half cage. I did forget to mention that. So, so I can put bucket seat to harness. Either way, I'm getting ahead of myself, but this is how the interior looks. This is the one thing that needs to be taken care of, which is this rust. This is on the driver's side floor panel, and the owner did tell me about that. But I'm thinking it's not a big deal because it's very small, so I can just cut around it, put a piece of steel, weld it, and that's it. I can go on about my day, right? Or is there a lot more to that that I'm just missing in my mind? Let me know in the comments. Okay, I know what you guys wanna see. What does it have under the hood? Maybe it has nothing under the hood. Let's find out. This is it. So all I know is that this is a 355 small block. It has some minor head work done along with some other things that you know, I really don't know, but I'll put all of what's done to it in the pinned comments below. But overall, this does look way cleaner and a way better state than the Mustang. So about these old engines, the Camaro has a 355, the Mustang has a 302. I have to be honest, I don't know anything about these engines, but it's a learning process. I will learn just like I don't know anything about my Camry engine and I'm learning. That is the whole point of this. It's a learning process that I enjoy. So now on to the second question, which is really the first question. Does it turn on? Hmm, let me show you something. So this would be a trunk, right? Hmm, what's in here? Let me show you. It has a proper fuel cell. So this is how you would put fuel in it and then just close it right up. So, you know, it's a bit of a process if I were to take this to a gas station. And not only that, this trunk, you guys saw, it has four pins, so I no longer have hood pins, I have four trunk pins. So I have to remove all of that, then remove the hood, and then get to the fuel cell, open this. Oh man, this seems like it would be a scene at the gas station. So since that takes a lot of time, it is cool, it does look cool, but I don't know how I feel about it. I'm thinking maybe if I can just put back the stock hinges and then the trunk can just open just like a normal trunk. But I don't know because it does have the tub here. So I'm not sure if that's gonna fit or if that's gonna work at all. So this is a four speed manual transmission with a vertical gated shifter. Meaning this shifter goes up, down, up, down. That's it. So yes, it does start. There's just one extra step in order to do so. I have to flip this switch up in order to turn on the fuel pumps and then I just start it. it does start. Maybe it needs some assistance or maybe I need to learn how to properly start it. We'll see, we'll figure out along the way. And that minor head work that they did definitely rocks the car because I felt like I was in a boat in there and it also has that chop at me, which is nice. So one thing I do not like about this car is that I am inhaling fumes when I'm inside there. So I am assuming that they probably cut the exhaust somewhere in the middle. Either way, I don't like that. So I, if that is the case, which we'll look into that in another video, I will definitely extend the exhaust out because I don't want to die while driving my car. So that is it for my 68 Camaro. I am so happy to have this car. In the next Camaro video, we will do like a similar thing we did with the Mustang. I'll go in depth, we'll put it on the lift, show you more of it and my plans with it. So let me know, what do you guys think? Are you as excited as I am to have a 68 Camaro? Let me know in the comments and I'll see you then. Bye.